Well, how do that, chums? This is a cup of tea with Captain Steve, and today, chums, I'm talking about Light Note 5. You probably guess because it's behind me in the background, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about the promotional aspect, the promotional side of Light No Fire. There's a lot of adverts popping up on Instagram, on Reddit, and other social media places, and people see that, that it could be that Light No Fire is on the horizon or precipice of being released. Let's jump on over onto the Tinter webs and take a look-see at the evidence. But before we get to the evidence, let's have a look at what the community thinks. So, why do you think Hello Games has started an advertising campaign for Light No Fire? Now, this was one hour ago, but hmm, let me just refresh this page, because I'm fairly sure that it's been a lot longer than one hour now. Okay, let's scroll on back down onto here and let's have a quick look. See, yeah, you go two hours. We've had 70 votes. It's super close to actual release. Six months or so. Okay, that's got 19% of the vote, which is pretty high. To get people to wish list it, understand interest, 47% have hit that up. And that's, that's, that's kind of my thinking on this, people, to drum up interest. But we're going to go across. You can see I've got quite a lot of tabs open along the top there. So I've got a lot to say on this. And I've got a lot of evidence to show things. So we get into it. To show hype to Sony or Microsoft to bid for exclusive, 4%. To boost views on trailer for ad revenue and hype, 6%. Sean has never been great at business. <laughs> Little shrug. So that's kind of for the people that are kind of a bit more nonplussed or haven't really got too much to say. At least they've got an option to hit so they can actually see the results. So let's get into it then, people. Now, I think if there was to be some sort of, you know, six monthly sort of drop for this game, I would imagine to see a lot more happening on their actual website. Now, as good as their website is, it doesn't list what platforms it's on. It doesn't give any sort of release date or window. It doesn't say what the age certificate is. The actual trailer itself, as lovely as the trailer is, it shows people riding on mounts. It shows one slash of a sword for combat and people loading bows but not releasing arrows. It doesn't really give a hint at what the game is about. What's the actual objective? What's the goal? Is there an antagonist? We've just seen how to traverse the world and how you interact with that world with building a few bases. There's not too much to go on, to be honest. There's a lot more questions that were asked inside of this trailer than answered, in my opinion, people. I've done a whole trailer breakdown and uh, what I, my thoughts and feelings are on that. If you want to hit that up, hit it up there because there's a lot of analysis. Heck yes. Anyways, so yeah, I would expect to see a lot more happening on their website, especially with the platforms. I would love to know what platforms this is going to release on. And I've also done another video on why I think it could be a staggered release. If you want to see that, hit that up. Again, lots of analysis, just like this video. Anyway, jumping over onto Steam. Now you can have a look at the DBs in the background for Light No Fire to see if there has been any sort of activity since it was announced. And you can see here the last record was updated just two days ago on the 14th of December. But what did they do? They added cleaned up images into the actual repositories and not much else. They did add in an additional language file. Another language set has been added in, which is lovely. So brilliant, lovely jubbly. So the Chinese sort of, I think it was the Chinese Chinese ones that went in. Now, Hello Games did actually advertise for Chinese speakers about this time last year. And we'll get to the actual job adverts that are over at Hello Games right now and see if that might give us some sort of insight. But that's that's on the last tab. So hopefully you're going to stick with me and get through all of this. But all I'm pointing out is there's not much activity happening over on side of here. Now, the fact that they are adding language files, language is usually one of the last things to be added into games. So that's a good sign. It's not a bad sign. It's a good sign. But what I'm not seeing is an age certificate rating happen. Which is fine if you want to leave this as a digital download, but we all know that Hello Games likes their merch. Even The Last Campfire had merch and pre-order bonuses with merch. And so did No Man's Sky. I don't think Light No Fire is going to be any different, especially since Sean of the Murrays even rocked up at the freaking Game Awards wearing a t-shirt with that logo on. So when he was at the Game Awards wearing that t-shirt with that logo on, he obviously wasn't there to talk about No Man's Sky. He was there to talk about Light No Fire as fricking on the t-shirt. He's got the t-shirt, mate. So yeah, it was definitely to pitch Light No Fire, not No Man's Sky. 
And I just think there's a, a lot into lot to be said in just that simple statement of choosing what to turn up to the Game Awards wearing and the team that he turned up with. But anyway, let's move on. So over on the actual Steam page, you can wishlist this title, which is very interesting indeed. So I've hit this button, and I imagine a lot of you out there inside of the viewer bus have hit this wishlist button. If you have, hit a like <laughs> to the video. Give us an indication if you've smacked that button. But I think Hello Games has put out these adverts to see what the interest is. How many people are adding this to wishlist? How many people might be hitting this up for pre-order? It's probably going to give them also an idea of how many people are going to be logging in day one so they get an idea of traffic to their servers, which I think is extremely important for a game where multiplayer is core of its actual sort of universe or gaming franchise. So I honestly think that they've done it for player numbers. Now, I don't wishlist many games. I've wishlisted a couple. I don't mind you seeing which games I've wishlisted. I've wishlisted Dune Awakenings. I quite like the look of it because it's got megafauna. It's got survival aspects. But I, this is one that I want to see reviews on. Power World. I've got Under a Rock there, Nightingale, Towers of Azkabar. I'm going to do a trailer of Towers of Azkabar comparison to Light No Fire. I think these two are going to be juggernauts when it comes to sci-fi or well, fantasy venture in, in whatever year they release. And I'm hoping that they go toe-to-toe -to -toe and head-to-head. -to -head. Both of these games seriously are on my radar for different reasons. But doing the trailer analysis, it also shows a lot of what's going on in Towers of Azkabar. It shows the game direction. It shows the antagonists. It shows the objective of the game. The things that Light No Fire hasn't done. And Towers of Azkabar... It, I don't even know when that's hitting the actual shelves. Anyways, moving on. So another thing inside of the polls was to show hype for Sony or Microsoft to bid for exclusives. Now, I don't mean that they're going to buy Hello Games. Uh, I don't think Microsoft has got enough money to do that after the Bethesda dealings. But anyways, that's a different video as well. Anyway, let's jump on over because it happened with Hogwarts Legacy. You know, Hogwarts stirred up a lot of interest with their trailer. And Sony jumped in and bought exclusivity over some bonus content. Some later missions, it's not early content, it's later stuff and cosmetic stuff. And they had first dibs, and then it came to all platforms a few months later. It could just be something like that. It could just be to generate some interest from these two consoles that are obviously at war with each other, Xbox and PlayStation Wars. It's been going since the dawn of freaking consoles. So there'd be fools not to sort of put it out there and see if people want to step up and say, you know what, we want exclusivity. Can you put in this interesting cosmetic? Can you put in this bonus mission? Can you do this? Can you do that for us? Perfect time to do it. Why it's nearing to the end of completion so they can look into whether or not they add in something exclusive for certain consoles. That's all I'm getting out on it, people. I'm not saying that Hello Games is going to say, right, it's only going to be for PlayStation or it's only going to be for Xbox. I don't think that's going to happen. It might be for a timed exclusive, but that costs a freaking packet of moolah. And whoever does that, if Sony does it over Xbox, or if Xbox does it over to Sony, then they're gits. I, I really don't like that. I don't mind little mini sort of, you know, an extra additional con cosmetic here, or a different mission here, or an exclusive dragon that's only available for Xbox players or something. Fine, knock yourselves out, you know, but to stop other people from playing it, and then those people watch other people playing it, it it's not good, is it? It's like watching your brothers open their Christmas presents before you at Christmas or something, where you take it in turns. I hate that. No, just dive in. You know, because there's, there's a good chance that relatives have bought your brothers exactly what they've bought you, and you're going to get spoilers, you know? It's that sort of shenanigans. Anyways, jumping over to back to the poll, the next one was to boost views on a trailer for ad revenue or hype. Okay, right. That got 6% of the vote, which I'm surprised, but at the same time, it could be. So looking at the YouTube channel of Hello Games and looking at, I mean, that's comparison, my channel to theirs, I've got a flat line. Look at those, they've got a freaking mountain, a real world mountain, not one of these video game mountains. <laughs> yeah, because Light No Fire has got over 10 million views in eight days. Do you know the sort of revenue that generates? God, I, I haven't got that many views for the whole channel of my life. I, I, God. Okay, anyway, scrolling down, I can show you just how sort of much revenue that's generating them. It's going to be generating just over the last 30 days in between 1.6k 
and 25k. I'm going to say a happy medium in there. Let, let's just say 15k. Yeah, it's generated them about 15k. 12 to 15k is where I'd say it probably is. That's a lot of money to pump into social advertising to get those pop-ups to appear on Reddit, to get them to appear on Facebook and wherever else you've seen them. It's probably paid for itself. The video itself is probably paying for its own advertising. It's perpetual advertising. It's great. I've done it myself on my own channel. I've played about with things. Yeah, so I made this video channel on how to pro I've, I've, I've done a load of promotions. Well, I say a load. I've done two. So I've got a good idea of what I'm talking about. I laid out like 75 quid on each of these. It netted me a load of subscribers and look how many views it netted me, which is lovely. And the reason that I did these is because my channel is very much a No Man's Sky channel. And I wanted to point out to people that it's not just No Man's Sky. I also do Captain Steve Talks where I talk about cryptids and weird stuff. I do other games like Robocop and Elden Ring and Cyberpunk, all sorts of other games. And I'm hoping to do a lot of fantasy games next year. And now we've got this game which is announced which is a fantasy game. It's a perfect timing for me to do my promotion. It could just be that Hello Games have said, we're not just a one trick pony. We're not just the No Man's Sky guys. We've now got this title, hence why he rocked up in the t-shirt with the new logo on it. It's all about perception, trying to get people to get their head around the fact, oh, you're the Joe Danger Man, just like Todd Howard said to him, to, oh, you're the guy that's making that really interesting game, Light No Fire. You know, it's just perception handling. It's just to say we're not a one-trick pony anymore. Now, something that I didn't put on the polls, and I put Sean has never been a great businessman, I honestly think he actually is, secretly. You know, who else can put out a singular emoji on the Twitterverse that sends their whole community into speculation, hype train mode, and, and, and do all the marketing for them? I don't know another company that can do that. Uh, that that's freaking genius. And it might be accidental genius, but he just seems to do things by accident because he knows what people want. His dream was to make an open sci-fi game, and he figured if I do it, there's got to be other people that like it. Boom! He hit a niche in the market. Open planet, open world game for reals. Boom! He's done it again. Guy's a freaking genius. I don't care what people say. Yes, he might not be the shrewdest businessman at keeping his, his cards to his chest. He might not be very good at playing poker. I think he's too honest for his own good sometimes. Even though there's videos out there where it says, you know, no man's lie and it's just lie after lie. No, I honestly think he wanted to deliver all those things and he had every intention of delivering those things at that time. He's very much a person that lives in the moment. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's what my takeaway anyway. I could be completely wrong. But anyways, moving on a little bit, because there's another reason why I think he could have done this. It wasn't on the poll. And I think that could be to try and glow, grow their own studio. Not so long ago, two months ago, Hello Games put this post up. If anyone has been affected by the devastating layoffs, you know, like with Bungie and Destiny and all that lot, this week, would you consider a role at Hello? We'll be honoured to include you in our options. So he's basically saying, come over, throw us over your CVs. Now, when you scroll on down here and you look at the comments, there's one right here that says, Light No Fire looks freaking awesome. They've already got some traffic coming over from would-be individuals. There's probably a lot of people that would comment on here that rather not. They'd rather just, you know, hit a thumbs up and send over their freaking CV in secret. You know, it's not the sort of thing that you chime in on. But it's probably got them a heck of a lot of CVs come through their letterbox. And when would you like to have CVs and interest in your company? Just about when you're going to be putting out a new IP, a new game, where you might want a fresh set of eyes to implement a few things that you guys hadn't thought of in your own little collective bubble. I think that's freaking genius in itself, people. Now, here's the actual adverts that they've got open now. Chinese speaking is gone and just so happens to be that they've just added Chinese language sets into their game. But yes, they're looking for new designers. They're looking for build engineers, quality testers, experienced programmers, graduates and junior programmers, graphic and engine programmer, permanent, but on a six month contract, which is kind of interesting there. Experienced artist, junior artist, because this one on this, this is the only one that's on a six month contract there's another one that's QA tester just on contract so they might be looking for these two people I'm thinking 
for their new IP. Now, I haven't clicked on these. I haven't looked in to see whether there's any clues in either of these job adverts for that. But all these are permanent. So I'd imagine the other ones, they're going to need those people for longevity. But let's just have a look at the two contracty ones to see if there's anything in there that might give a clue into what they're hoping to move towards. You know what? I'm just going to take a better read of these. I'm going to pause it and I'm going to just highlight anything. I'll just let you know what I found. Okay, people, well, I've read both of these while I drink in my tea and cast my little eye peepers over them. Now, the only thing that really jumps out is inside of this one, which uh, is the graphics engineer programmer, it mentions learning deep technical knowledge to optimize, maintain and develop core areas of our bespoke engine. So it's more engine sort of work, back end engine sort of work. So that's kind of interesting. Yep. And also the optimization of low level, uh, yeah, deep understanding of optimization. Deep understanding of optimization means that probably they're just adding pol polish to titles. I still think, still think No Man's Sky is in need of a little bit of optimization and polish. And I'm hoping we see a lot more of that happen in 2024. But that's going to be another video. I'm going to be doing a video just on what I think is going to happen in 2024. I've already done what I think would be a big year for No Man's Sky in 2024. If you want to see that video, lots of analysis in there, go check that one out. But the QA tester, again, it's just sort of like finding bugs. But again, since that it's a contract role, it does make me think that they might be close to actually putting something out a little bit more substantial for um, their latest IP for Light No Fire. Now, when it comes to Light No Fire, I honestly think that there is probably a chance that it could release in you know 2024 but for me to get excited there's a couple of things that i need to see happen i need to see some sort of certification appear on the actual title because i don't think it's just going to be digital uh, i would like to see more about what the actual game entails whether it's got an objective a, 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 an antagonist the actual role the actual gameplay i'd like to see a bit more of the combat i'd like to see some more interviews from sean of the murray i just don't think this trailer although it's generated hype it doesn't tell us enough about the game to make people say this is definitely a game for me it's got things it just made me go wow this is freaking beautiful i want to know more but at the moment we don't know much so i think we need to see a little bit of that happen and I also feel that we should know the platforms it's going to be releasing on at the very minimum before I start getting excited. You know, that I'd expect to see published on their actual website and on the side of Steam, but at the moment it just says TBC. And also a release date, which is also TBC. It's not so much the release date that I would like to see. What I would like to see is pre-orders and the bundles. What's gonna be coming with those bundles and the price tag that they're setting on this game? Because we haven't got any of that, I don't think that we're anywhere even close to saying it's going to be dropping with inside of the next six months. If we see some of that stuff happen, if we see some more activities on the depots and stuff firing up inside of Steam, then yes, my excitement levels are going to change, and my opinion might change on the actual release window. But for now, I still think that we're quite a long way off. I still think they've got to do a lot when it comes to server testing, to destruction, Especially with it getting 10 million freaking views, that might have shocked them inside of the Hello Game studio, thinking, oh my god, how are we going to deal with, even if we just get 10% of those people join us, if we have a million people hit our servers on day one, what the flying fudge is going to happen to our servers? Are they just going to turn into magma? You know, there's that, okay? Especially if they're thinking about turning on crossplay day one. Can you imagine how many sort of bug reports they're going to get if they roll it out on all platforms to do with the game? They're going to get hammered left, right and centre on the old Zendesk. Because that's the only method that they use right now is Zendesk. And then they've got to cut all that down and play with that data to get some sort of visual evidence of what they need to fix in what order. If they are to release it on all platforms all at once, I honestly think that they're going to need a freaking army of quality testers and people to squash those bugs. If anything, if it does release on all platforms, maybe they're not going to turn crossplay on. So at least they can have fragmented dialogue on where the errors are happening and then bring everybody together with crossplay at a later date. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I feel staggered approach for something that's got this much interest, this much hype, and probably that a, a shed ton of day one players. They're going to have to rethink things somehow, you know? Anyway, people, that's, that's pretty much all I've got to say on this. So you're probably thinking, well, I've watched this video. What did I get from it? 
Well, I think what you can take away from this is Hello Games have put some money into doing some advertising for multiple reasons. I think all of those reasons in all of those tabs and everything that I've just talked about has probably crossed their thought patterns, okay? And I don't think any of them takes precedence over another. But I honestly don't think right now, I think right now is too early to say it's going to drop in six months, it's going to drop in a year, or it's going to drop in 2025 in August or September. That's where I'm putting my money, by the way, people. August, September 2025. We'll see if I'm right. We'll see if I'm wrong. Doesn't really matter either way. It's just a bit of fun. But yeah, that's where I'm going with it, people. I've done videos on breakdowns as to why I think that anyway. But I honestly think, just don't just don't get yourself overly excited thinking that this is going to drop in the next six months. Until we see some of those early signs that I mentioned, I don't think at the moment it's worth getting yourself overly excited. I think right now, excitement on No Man's Sky and 2024 should be something to get a bit hyped about. And I'll be doing a video as to why I think that. So keep an eye out, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because you don't want to miss it. Until next time, people, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.